Uh, it is, according to some accounts, the first day of spring. We're taking a look at the spring housing market in Canada. It's also the peak season for demand, and home prices apparently stopped falling in February, indicating buyers may be back in the market. Um, we ha have got more now from Robert Cabbage, uh, who is Cedar Economist at Vimo Capital Markets. Robert, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Sure thing. Thanks for having me. Walk us through what normally happens at this time of year before we get into the outlook for prices, please. Uh, seasonally, well, it's a very quiet period right now. Obviously, we're still in, in the dead of winter. You can see it outside right now. But as we get into into April, May, and especially into June, uh, you see a lot more listings come back onto the market, and you see a lot of pent up demand come off the sidelines. This is this is going to be maybe a little bit of a unique spring because we have seen over the last year or two a lot of listings held back off the market because conditions were very weak, and at the same time, you've seen the market adjusting to higher mortgage rates. So a lot of pent up demand has been kind of building in the background that hasn't kind of been let out yet because of those high rates. So it's going to be interesting to see how those two forces meet and, and which one ultimately wins out. Because right now, the overall balance in the Canadian market and some of the local markets like the GTA are, are, are actually pretty neutral right now. Pretty neutral. You have some fascinating figures here. So you say uh, over the decades, real estate has tended to increase in value at around 3% in real terms. And then we have inflation, let's call it about 2% now. I know it's a bit higher. So you say at that, say, 5% nominal price growth, if we had that, which sounds pretty good in the housing market, it would take until early 2027 before we got back to the 2022 peak in home prices? Uh, it could take a while, sure. And that's indicative of, of how stretched the market was back in 2021, early 2020. Too, when the market was really running on the back of of zero mortgage rates, zero interest rates, deeply negative real real mortgage rates, um, and so that I mean that's that's the reality of of the situation we've been dealing with. There was a lot of froth in the market that had to be worked off, and for the most part, we've we've got through that period. But the 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 path to getting back to those peak price levels is really long. I know that sounds like a long period of time, especially in the environment that we've been used to where prices are rising steadily year after year. But if you look back through past housing cycles in North America, obviously the, the post-2009 case was an extreme case in the US. But even in Canada, we've had markets like like Calgary go through five, six year periods where prices were down from peak levels. Uh, the 1990s in Southern Ontario took you know, the better part of a decade to get back to peak levels. I'm not saying we're going to repeat that situation. It was extremely negative and a lot of negative macroeconomic factors came into play then that we don't anticipate now. But um, it, it, it speaks to how much froth needs to be worked off and how the affordability challenge is still going to kind of keep a lid on just how quickly prices can snap back. I mean, we have the population growth um, and we have this cultural propensity. People want to own a house, so that will inflate, uh, will infl tend to inflate values. Is there a case, though, that we're just investing too much of our national wealth and productivity in housing? Well, this is this has been an ongoing issue, right? Where where residential investment as a share of GDP has been pushing record highs for a number of years, and is is it crowding out investment in other areas? Maybe. I mean, Canada Canada has a, this perennial productivity problem where we tend to underinvest in things like M and E and intellectual capital, and we we tend to have this underperformance of productivity over time. Does is that? Part of the reason it's possible. It's also, I mean, it's also just the natural response to the reality that when you're bringing in one to one and a half million people per year into the country, you're going to need a lot of physical investment in in in, in the residential side of the market, just out of necessity. So that, that's kind of what's driving it at the end of the day. And it's actually, you know, it, it, it actually speaks to the need right now. And we've kind of been of the view that. We're never going to double and triple the rate of housing construction as policymakers have been pushing for. We, we've said that from day one. It's just not going to happen. But the reality is that housing construction is holding up remarkably well considering how quickly interest rates have risen and, and how some of the investment demand has fallen off. So that speaks to the, just the, the demographic need for housing in this country. Did you say we're bringing in a million people? I thought it was more like 500,000. 
Uh, permanent resident targets would be about 500,000, but you add in another seven, 800,000 on permanent residents and, and you, you, you push up to, to close to a million and a half. That's